Hi everyone, this is John McKeever from Data Migrators here. Today we're going to have a look at Metal CI's unit testing capability. If you're not familiar with Metal CI, then I'd encourage you to have a look at one of the other videos. Start with the overview video that introduces what Metal CI is and can do for your organization. Today we're just going to look at automated unit testing for this job that I have open here on the canvas. This is a regular parallel data stage job. We're running version 11.5 here today. And this is called TRACC Accounts Debtors. So before we have a look in detail at a unit test specification and before we run a unit test, let's have a quick look at what a Metal CI unit test is. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Metal to inspect our job. Here's a, another example job. And it's going to inspect the source and target stages specifically and extract their metadata and create skeleton CSV files from the source and targets. Now it doesn't matter if those sources are uh, hierarchical stages, batch or streaming stages like Kafka or MQ, um, whether they're complex flat files that have non-normalized um, table structures we're going to extract the normalized table that will be generated as an output of those source stages and create template CSV files from those. Even though I'm calling them CSV files, we actually store some additional data in some complementary files that identify things like the data type of each column, the nullability, and other bits of metadata like that. So once we have those CSV files, what we're going to do is provide some data into them. That can be done using Metal CI's inbuilt test data fabrication capabilities, and we'll have a quick look at those shortly. You could also, if you want to, run your existing unit tests. So you can run your data stage job in a data interception mode, and Metal CI will read the data flowing into your job and intercept the, the links, capture that data into those CSV files for subsequent replay as a Metal CI automated unit test. Once you have that data in those files, you can then share them with your friends and family, business analysts, other uh, colleagues in your organization through tools like Excel, like you would any other CSV file. And executing unit tests involves Metal CI again identifying source stages and replacing them at runtime with our own operator, the underlying execution system of data stage parallel jobs, for example, is orchestrate, and we will replace the source implementations with our own code and inject the contents of those CSV files at runtime into those source components. That data will then flow through the job as normal. We'll also replace the output stages with our own components and compare what arrives in those stages with a CSV file representing our expected output and that forms a unit test. So here I am back in my job. So I'm going to go to the custom menu item and select unit test specification. And the unit test specification was generated automatically for me by Metal CI. This takes me into the Metal CI user interface. And you'll see on the left hand side that there are three sections to this. Unit testing, compliance, which is the ability to test your job against a library of coding best practices, and version control, which is our interface into Git. So the main window you're seeing here has in the top left the name of the job, TRACC Accounts Debtors, and below that two sections, the specification section and the data section. The specification section contains an automatically generated unit test spec, named, as you can see here, after the name of the job with a YAML extension. So YAML is just a syntactic convention, a bit like JSON, but without all of the braces. And over here on the right-hand side, we have the specification, which if you have a background in um, tools like Cucumber, for example, uh, which is a popular automated test tool, you may recognize the structure. We're saying, given these particular inputs, when I run the job with these conditions, then success is defined by these outputs looking like this. And the inputs are defined on a link by link basis because of course a single source stage could have multiple input links coming from it. 
And for each input link, we're referencing the name of a CSV file. And as you can probably guess, those CSV files are the ones over here in our data section. In the when section, then listing the parameters that we will supply to our job as part of the test. Because remember, test data is more than just data going into our source stages. It's also the runtime parameters we're providing to our jobs. In this case, uh, a timestamp. And then finally at the bottom, we're defining our success criteria, which is that this link out transform contains data that looks like the contents of this particular CSV file. And if we look on the left hand side under the data section, the CSV files which have been automatically created by Metal CI and referenced in the specification are tagged with in and out labels as appropriate. So let's go and have a look at those. I've actually preloaded these files with some data and that data can come from different places. I can just click in here and type just like I would in Excel, for example. Um, no, nothing special, something you will be uh, familiar with. I could, if I wanted to import it from Excel or if I wanted, I could run the interception that I described earlier where I take data maybe from an existing data set or database and record it here as a CSV test data set. Or I could use Metal CI's integrated data fabrication capabilities. So if I wanted to, I could say for this particular decimal column, I wanted to create a random number and I wanted it to be between one and a hundred. And I could do that and I could create 10 additional rows of test data, and there we go. That's an easy way of fabricating data. And there are, uh, I think, something in the region of 200 data fabrication algorithms that ship with Metal CI. Don't hold me to that number, um, but they're very capable and you can, uh, they cover a, a wide variety of use cases, names, addresses, uh, dates. Um, if you wanted to, for example, synthesize personally identifiable information so data which is typically classed as sensitive this is a very good uh, a very useful capability to be able to do that you can create valid test data on uh, non-existent uh, entities so you can create people create addresses create telephone numbers and uh, test your jobs without worrying about data privacy concerns so for now i'm just going to skip back i don't want to save any of those changes so I have some source data and I have a test specification. So let's go and run this test spec in data stage. So let's go off and run our job directly from within data stage designer. I simply hit run and all I need to do is select a specific value for this special parameter set that needs to be added to your job. Uh, you simply set P unit testing to enabled and I'll provide some other parameters I need to as well, and hit run. So this is just like a regular data stage job run. We will see the logs being generated. We'll see the link counts being updated on the canvas with the number of rows being read from our test data sets. And if we have a look at the log, the first thing you might notice is a warning here that tells us that unit testing is enabled. So this is not a regular data stage run, because we've set that specific parameter, Metal CI has intercepted the job and replaced these source stages and target stages with its own components. So source data sets will not be read, target data sets will not be written. We'll be using the CSV files here. If we scroll further down the log, we can see another warning that our unit test has in fact failed. So the job has completed successfully, but our functional unit test has failed. So we can find out why that is by going again to the tools menu, custom menu item and unit test results. That again takes us into the metal user interface and shows us a diff style view of the actual produced results versus what we expected. And we can see that we got four rows returned to us as expected. However, there was a difference in the deck balance column. And here we've got expected versus actual. So that's fine, let's go back and fix that. I'll jump back into my job. I happen to know where the problem is. It's in this transformer. I'll just jump into there, set my derivation correctly, recompile my job, 
and execute another unit test again, providing my unit test enabled parameter. And I'll flick back quickly to our unit test results. And because Metal CI is stitched into the execution infrastructure of your data stage job in your development environment, you don't need to refresh the page. The successful unit test has informed Metal and it's updated the page appropriately. So that's a successful unit test in just a few minutes. Of course, one thing to mention is that unit test artifacts like the specification and the data that supports it are optionally checked into Git alongside the data stage job itself when you do your Git integration. We'll touch on that in the Git video, but I just wanted to show you how unit tests integrate with the Git version control. So that's all from me. Thanks for your attention. Please do look at the other videos and get in touch if you'd like to find out more. Thanks.